Hi everyone, welcome back to Lovely Lavender Wishes. It's Renee and I hope you're having a very blessed day today. So today we're gonna try something a little different. Look what I have here. I brought over my sewing machine. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, sewing in, on this page today. So today we are going to be in Genesis. We're going back to the first book of the Bible, y'all. First book. And I really haven't, I've been looking through my Bible and I really haven't um, journaled a lot in the Old Testament. So I'm really wanting to get back to that a little bit. But um, I am using this printable from, I think it was Soul Sisters Bible Journaling from my Facebook group. And they did a devotional on prayer. And this was one of the pictures from it. Um, this was as well. And then all I did off camera was put Genesis 26, 25, because that is the verse that we are going to be looking at today. So I just, with stickers, put that on there. And then there were some like little uh, flowers. I think it was like six or seven or maybe even more pages of printables. So if you go to Soul Sisters uh, Facebook group, um, Charlene Warwick is in that, I think she's part of that group or maybe even the head of that group. And um, if you go under files, you can find the one. I think this is called um, the prayer closet. So th the reason why I picked this is, you know, across the board in all of my Facebook groups, well, most of my Facebook groups, they've all been talking about prayer lately. Prayer has been coming up a lot. And then, of course, I go to church this Sunday and they are going to be starting a whole series on prayer. So, you know, you know how God works. He does that, um, you know, where like he's bringing things up across the board um, in all my groups. And we're all kind of focusing on the same thing right now. And apparently we all need prayer, y'all. We need to be in our prayer closets. And um, so I really liked this. It's kind of like reminds me of like you go into your little your little space um, to be with the Lord. And this reminds me of a room that my friend has. She actually turned one of her front hall closets into a prayer closet. And she took everything out of there. She's got, I mean, it's so peaceful in there. She's got like this little waterfall in there. She's got like this little beanbag chair. She's got uh, this gorgeous lamp in there and then all her books and her prayers. And then on the wall, she's got like all her prayer requests, like, um, tacked to the wall or she's got like a big board that she can tack prayer requests and I just really like that um if you don't have you know a prayer closet or or anything you can you know do a prayer corner you can do a prayer chair you can do a prayer bench outside you can go on a prayer walk I mean you don't have to have like a little room um you can even just have a prayer journal and just carry it around with you because you know prayer is with us at all times so the verse I am focusing on today is Genesis 26, 25. So this is um, the story of Abraham and Isaac and Esau and all that. And God promised a whole bunch of promises to Isaac. And at this point, so in at the beginning over here on this side, here, let me move this over. Um, I'm starting in chapter 26. The promise that God gave to Isaac is reaffirmed here. So there was a famine in the land in addition to the one that occurred in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines at Gerar. And the Lord appeared to him there and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land that I tell you about. Stay in this land as an alien and I will be with you and bless you. For I will give these lands to you and your offspring. And I will confirm the oath that I swore to your father, Abraham. I will make your offering offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky. I will give your offspring offspring. Oh my gosh, y'all, I can't say that word. I will give your offspring all these lands and all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because Abraham listened to me and kept my mandate, my commands, my statutes, and my instructions. So Isaac settled in Gerar. Gerar. And this kind of reminds me of how we are foreigners in this land. I mean, you know, I've been talking y'all for months now about how I am sick of this earth. <laughs> Like, I am sick of all the sin that's rampant. I am sick of all the hypocrisy. I'm sick of all the evil kind of like, I feel like evil's winning out at times. Um, I know that's not the case. I know God's in control and I know good will win in the end. But it's very frustrating living on a sinful fallen earth. <laughs> you all know that. And in these, you know, human frail bodies. But so that's kind of like, you know, so Isaac 
settled in this foreign place. And that's kind of like what we're in. We're on this foreign, in this foreign place, no matter where you live, what country you live in, the earth is not our home. Heaven is our home. And um, so right now we're kind of foreigners, you know, we're just kind of like, just we're here for a season, right? Well, in verse 23 and 24, later on, it says, from there, he went up to Beersheba. You need to read the whole chapter, but, and the Lord appeared to him that night. I mean, can you imagine the Lord appearing to you? I know lots of people, the Lord has appeared to y'all. Um, I know that I've heard him speak audibly to me once in my life. And boy, that was like, whew, you know, like I, it was like someone was in the room with me, you know, like I heard an audible voice. Um, I know the Lord appears in dreams to people. The Lord appears in visions. The Lord, you know, might just be in the word or like, like right now, he's appearing right now to me in all the variety of Facebook pages, my church, my friends, we're all like getting ready for this prayer. Um, you know, this, the series that we're going to be going into about prayer. And we've been talking about prayer closets and a lot of my Facebook groups and the importance of prayer and how we need prayer. So, you know, God's been speaking to me that way too. So from there, he went up to Beersheba and the Lord appeared to him that night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your offspring because of my servant, Abraham. So he, meaning Isaac, built an altar there called on the name of the Lord. That's the verse. I'm, that's the what I'm really focusing on. Called on the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. So he kind of like made his own little prayer closet right there, right y'all? He made an altar there. He called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent. So he made like a little home there. Isaac's servants also dug a well there. So I am going to take my black pen and I'm just going to underline this. He built an altar there, called on the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And they also dug a well there. That's the verse I'm really focusing on. So we need to call on the name of the Lord. And that's what this is representing. Call me. And I love these colors, y'all. Purples and pinks and all that. So I brought my, my uh, whatever this is, a sewing machine over. And we'll see if it works on this side. I plugged it in over here. I want to try to get it to work. Um, let me, yeah, let's do this first. So what I did was okay i printed out so this was another um part of the printable it was just like these flowers aren't they gorgeous i love the colors y'all i don't know if you can see it as brightly on the camera as you can in real life but oh they're gorgeous colors and all i did was print this on some card stock and i just i cut it out and folded it over just like so now this was a prayer that was also in Soul Sisters. It was, it's called Traveling on My Knees. So this is in the files section as well. If you can't ever find anything, go to the files section on Facebook groups. And that's where a lot of like the uploads are and the free, you know, printables and things like that. You can also go under media and that's where you'll find all the live um, videos, um, pictures that people post, things like that if you want ideas. But listen to this prayer, y'all. Traveling on My Knees. Last night, I took a journey to a land across the seas. I didn't go by ship or plane. I traveled on my knees. I saw so many people there in bondage to their sins. And Jesus told me I should go, that there were souls to win. But I said, Jesus, I can't go to the lands across the seas. He answered quickly, yes, you can, by traveling on your knees. He said, you pray, I'll meet the need. You call and I will hear. It's up to you to be concerned for lost souls far and near. And so I did. I knelt in prayer and gave up some hours of ease. And with the Savior by my side, I traveled on my knees. As I prayed on, I saw souls saved and twisted persons healed. I saw God's workers' strength renewed while laboring on the field. I said, yes, Lord, I'll take the job, your heart I want to please. I'll heed your call and swiftly go by traveling on my knees. Wow, y'all. And that's author unknown. Just by reading that, I just get emotional. I'm like, wow, you know, what prayer can do, right? And so what I'm going to do with my sewing machine, so let me move this. I'm going to move this over. It's This is a little sewing machine I got um, from Amazon. Um, it's like, look, it's a, it's a really tiny machine. I love it, though. You can do all these different... Um, it's an easy machine to take, you know, to do, and you can do all these different, um, little stitches here. I'm going to be working with 12 here, 12, this little zigzag stitch. 
Um, I put some pink, bright pink uh, thread in. And if you don't know how to use a sewing machine, which I didn't when I first got this, I used to sew a long time ago, but I did not know how to, um, you know, thread this or anything. Everything is on YouTube, y'all. You can literally watch everything on YouTube. It shows you step-by-step step how to thread it, how to make your little, um, you know, bobbins with, you know, the thread in the bottom and how to clean this out if you need to. But this is really one of my favorite ones. And I think I got it for like 50 bucks, but I think the price has gone up since then. I don't even know. I'm trying to look at, trying to see what kind of brand this is. I don't even know what this is. Um, XPCB, it says right here. I don't even know if that's the brand or what. Um, I'd have to probably find the, the um, instruction booklet that I got with this thing. But... Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I don't see anything, but this is what it looks like. So I got it because it had lavender on it, you know, because it's my favorite color. So what I'm going to do, okay, so here's my piece of paper that I folded in half, right? But I want to, first of all, I'm going to glue this little poem here on the front half of this page. So we're going to make this into kind of like um, a booklet or like a folder. This is going to become like a folder for all my prayers. So for this um, prayer uh, closet that I'm making of my own, um, all the prayers that I'm praying, the notes that I take from the sermons, everything is going to go in here. So we're going to make this into like a, a pocket to hold all my notes in. But before I make this into a pocket, I want to sew, even though I glued this onto the front page, see, I'm going to sew in a zigzag stitch around here just to give it some look, uh, like, uh, you know, some more texture. So I know you really can't see because it's, it's looking down here, but you can kind of watch. Um, let me get my pedal ready. This is what I do for junk journaling. I've actually have learned to love sewing. Well, sewing paper and sewing ephemera pieces and sewing all that. I used to sew some clothes way back in the day. My mom taught me, um, gosh, when I was super young, I don't remember any of it anymore, but we made like a skirt and a top way back in the day. I must have been nine, 10 years old. And let me, whoop, let me grab my scissors. And I like having these little threads. So look at that. That's the zigzag stitch. And that's the opposite side. But that is going to be hidden because that's going to be on the inside of the pocket. So that's why I wanted to do this first before I sew this together because I didn't want to sew this, you know, all the way through to both sheets. Does that make sense, y'all? So before you sew the two pieces together, sew this on the front first. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along, I guess I'll just sew the back too. Or maybe I'll just do this side and this side because this is already bent. So I'm gonna sew this together and this together because we're gonna make this into like a little pocket. Oops, and this came out. So I have to re-thread this. And I know you can't see what I'm doing on camera really because I'm trying to, to get it through the... Oof. This is the hardest part, getting it through the um, needle down here. because I can barely see anything. Hang on, y'all. There we go. Got it through. That was that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, that keeps getting caught. That's why it's okay. Let's try that again. So 
I'm gonna let some strings kind of hang. I like having those little threads. I think it gives it some kind of, um, I don't know, just more interest with the little threads hanging out. I'm not knotting it or anything. I'm just gonna cut it like that. And there we go. So here's the top and the bottom. And now, see, look at that. We just made a pocket, like a little folder to hold some things in. There we go. So let me, I think that's all I needed this for, but we'll put this to the side just in case we need it again. Okay, let me move this and shift this over. Okay. So for those of you who have not tried sewing, I don't know. All I can say is I was terrified to start it first. And then once I started, oh, it became an addiction. And now I just love sewing paper. And look at, look at like the really cool effects you can get. So let's see. Where did I have? Okay, I had these two little flowers that I cut out. And so I'm just going to add these down here. So this is going to be my cover of my little folder, my little prayer closet <laughs> for my notes and scriptures and whatever else. Let's go like that, put that like there. Let's see, do I want the pink on top? I think I do, so I'm gonna put that under there. There we go. Okay, I'm thinking I might just washi tape that in, but let's put that to the side for now. Now what I'm going to do is let's start journaling this page or start, yeah, doing our artwork. So I have this little stencil. Again, I got this big pack of stencils from either AliExpress or Amazon. It came with like 50 stencils or 25 stencils, all these different kinds of stencils. These were like six by six stencils. Love it. I use it all the time, all the time. So I grabbed some spun sugar and seedless preserves just because this is the light pink and the dark pink. Let me grab my, my brush. Let's get this started. So this is probably going to go somewhere right around here. So I want to have some of these peeping out from behind here. And it looks like barely have any ink on this. Here we go. Got to get it started. A lot of my distress pads are starting to really, I use them so much that I think I'm running out of ink. Well, and I think a couple of these I bought um, secondhand or used as well. So... Okay, so I am going to go in lightly with this darker color. See, because I knew that was, look how dark that is. So I wanted just some little darker spots, not many. I don't want to overwhelm the page. I just want some darker spots, some lighter spots. Let's see. Okay, I'm, I'm going to bring that over just a little bit so it's not just so like straight plus this is gonna kind of go there so let's I want to let me line this up there we go okay there's one let's have some kind of peeping out from down here see I still have some dark on my brush so that's fine and then let's do some over here. Woo, that is bright. Let me grab that. Just wipe it off if you don't like it. That's the beauty of this. Okay. Hmm, I'm 
let's just do a little bit. A little bit right here, just a tad. Y'all know me, I'll just keep going. Now I want that a little bit darker. Okay, perfect. Okay, there we go. That's all I wanna do, just a little bit of background. Okay, let's move those to the side. We'll wash that off. Okay. I'll wash that off later. Okay. So now let's glue this down. Now, if you wanted, if you didn't want to sew that little pocket, what you could do with this, which I was thinking at the beginning, is if you want to just glue down. You can do a couple things. You can just glue down like these sides and keep this as a pocket, you know, keep this part open. So just glue, put glue down the sides here and this would be open and you can use that as a pocket or glue down like these sides and then you can have this as a pocket. So you just put glue just along the edges or if you're, it's on this side of the page, you would glue along these sides of the edges and have that as a pocket. So either way, but this, since I'm making my own pocket, this I am going to, actually just, you know, glue the whole thing down. But you can make this into like a little pocket as well. Let's get these edges all done. And then I've got all these little flowers. So let's figure out. These were from the printable as well. Something like that. Hmm. Put this one down. Man, those colors like matched perfectly. <laughs> that was like. So again, it was sponge sugar and seedless preserves, but I did really light on the seedless preserves because I know that one um, is pretty juicy or that one was a new one that I literally just bought. And so the ink on that is pretty bright. But I love having like some of the light and then the dark. Let's see, let's just kind of go, do I wanna go like that? Or do we want that on top? I like that. Okay. And then let's glue this, our little address. They call this the address of the scripture. But yeah, this is, <laughs> I'm just thinking of my friend the other day. She told me, we went out to lunch and she told me like she was just praying, praying, praying. And she was like yelling at the devil and um, like vocally. And when she prays, she'll get like vocal and uh, she'll play her music and, you know, she has her so shofar. I have a shofar in my other room as well that actually um, someone blessed me with from Israel. It's an authentic shofar. And it's incredible. And so she's got a tape where she plays actual shofar music. And uh, for those of you who don't know what a shofar is, it is made out of a horn of an animal. I think it's a ram's horn. Um, and it's what they used to blow. And they blow it in the Bible. Um, I'll have to show it to y'all one day. I actually, here, let me grab it real quick since I'm talking about it. Hang on one second. Yeah, I'm not sure if y'all, you're not going to be able to see the whole thing here. So here's the end of it. It's a big shofar. See? So this is from Israel. I'm trying to, it's it's about, I don't know, three, four feet long. This one that I have. So I was blessed to be gifted this. And if you look it up, you can look it up and you can listen to the music. I mean, it's beautiful if you know how to play it. I 
I don't. <laughs> when I play it, it, it sounds pretty sad. But I do have it here for display, and it reminds me, you know, blow the shofar. We're in a war. You know, they used to blow it for festivals, for call to prayer, for wartime, for warnings, a whole bunch of stuff, for celebrations. So, yeah. So that's what a shofar looks like. And, y'all, so I think I'm going to put this... I think, yeah, I'm just gonna. Well, what I could do too, well, no, I think I'm gonna tape it in. I have this um, washi tape that I thought would, these flowers actually kind of go with this. I'm gonna washi tape this in so I can kind of flip it up and down. You can, if you don't have, if you don't wanna do that, you can um, clip it in with a paper clip, something like that. Let me see if I can find the end of this. Oh my gosh, y'all, there it is. I always lose the end to these, always. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna do it. Right about there. Where'd my scissors go? I'm trying to get this on about halfway. Let's get this even. There we go. And then I'm going to stick this in right there. And that way. Okay. I'm actually going to. Sorry, y'all. I keep fiddling. Okay, so I'm going to put glue on this because the glue is going to hold it better. Because sometimes washi tape, y'all, it's, it's removable. Like you can, if you want, you know, like. It's not as sticky as regular tape. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna put this halfway. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick it right there. Really get it in good. If you have a bone, what are those called? One of those plastic things. But you can just do it with your finger. Now, if you want, you can put washi tape on this side too, but I think that, that'll hold it enough. And now here we go. So here's my prayer for the cover. And then here I could put in little uh, notes and journaling cards and scripture cards. And so I had this extra piece that I just cut out. And now I just, luckily, look at that. It fits in there perfectly. So I'm actually just going to slip that in there and that will be a little prayer card that I can write on the back, do my prayers. Um, you can make little booklets with like paper or, you know, sew together like a little booklet or fold pages together like this. And, you know, like fold maybe five or six pages together. And then you have like a little prayer book that you can stick in here. But I'm going to just put this in here for now. And that's what I'm going to write my prayer on. And then I'm also going to add all my scriptures and my sermon notes from our prayer, uh, all the sermons that we're going to be doing that they're going to be starting in about a week um, on prayer. And then anything I learn in my Facebook groups as well. And so this is going to be like my little mini prayer closet right here. So call on the Lord, y'all. So again, we're in Genesis 26, 25, and that's where alt, um, Isaac built an altar because when the Lord appeared to him, he built an altar there, called on the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there. I love that. Pitch your tent where God calls you. I mean, just that alone. Um, if you do a word scripture study on calling on the name of the Lord, this is just one scripture out of hundreds in the Bible about calling on the name of the Lord. And look at what the people did when they called on the name of the Lord and when the Lord appeared to them. You can do like an incredible study on that. I did one a long time ago and I learned so much. But one thing um, about that was um, another thing we did as a family is we made those memorial stones. So we went out and grabbed um, a bunch of those like little kind of like flat rocks. And anytime the Lord um, said something to us or gave us a scripture, we wrote the scripture on the rock and we made like a little um, kind of like a waterfall type thing with the rocks and so every time we got a word from the Lord we wrote it on the rocks and we added it to our kind of um kind of like our tower 
um, of, of rocks. It was like our memorial. It was our stones of remembrance, um, our memorial. And so a lot of times the people, when they did hear from the Lord or when they wanted to remember something that the Lord told them, they would, you know, mark it with stones of memorial as well. And I kind of think of scriptures and our notes and our prayers as kind of our memorial stones to the Lord as well. So it doesn't have to be literal stones, even though we did do that at one point as a family. Um, just remembering and writing the dates down and writing when, you, you know, I always say write the dates down when you do your journal pages. We'll also write the dates down when you pray, pray for things because many times you'll pray for something and you won't realize how the Lord has answered that prayer until later. And you'll look at the date and it might be a few months later. It might be a few years later. It might be just a couple of days. It might be he answered your prayer before you it even came out of your mouth. So you just never know. The Lord answers our prayers in so many different ways. But it's really cool to write it all down and keep the dates down as well. And those can be like your memorial stones. Those are building your altar there. Those are pitching your tent there. Those are remembering things. And the whole thing about pitching your tent to me, that just means like you dwell in that place where the Lord has told you, where the Lord is drawing you, you dwell in that place. Dwell in the place of prayer with the Lord. Pitch your tent there in prayer to the Lord. Um, yeah, I just I just got this image in my head of uh, pitching a tent. So I might have to do a page on pitching a tent too. But I love this. Like you kind of go into your own little like private little place. And don't forget to call on the Lord. Um, when you pray to him. So, oh, y'all, y'all, this is, this is a fun page to do. And I really love the sewing. Um, I love it. It gives it like some texture. Again, I keep feeling it because y'all know, like I'm a touchy feely, like I like feeling the texture, but I love this. I love this prayer. Um, thanks Charlene and those, all the women at Soul Sisters who put together this little devotional on prayer. Um, I'm going to be working through that in the next few days or weeks as well as, you know, our sermon going through it with our church. And so all my notes and stuff are going to go in here. So thank you all so much for joining me. So this is what the page looks like. Just some, just some journal, uh, some stenciling and some cutting and some sewing and just, you know, putting together a fun little page. So hope you all enjoyed that. Get in prayer this week and I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all.